Hello, everyone. I am Sam Ekman of Gold Derby here with Storm Reed from The Last of Us. And Storm, you arrive in this series in a flashback episode, Left Behind. And in just this one episode, you have to quickly establish all this history and deep connection between Riley, your character, and Ellie. How did you create that with, with Bella in such a short amount of time? Yeah, I mean, uh, Bella is incredible. Uh, they command the screen and they are brilliant and, and they are a brilliant talent, but I think they are, are even a more brilliant person. So it wasn't hard. I didn't have a hard time, uh, you know, creating a rapport and, and building a bond with Bella. And I think that really informed uh, Ellie and Riley's relationship. And I think throughout it all, we were just trying to be as intentional as impossible as I can't even talk, as intentional um, as possible with their relationship and their friendship and, and, and how they interacted with one another. Because we do come in on the episode where I'm crawling back through the window, but they spent a lot of time together. I mean, they lived together, they shared, their, they shared the same room. So like you said, we had to establish a lot that we didn't get to see. But again, I, I couldn't have done it without Bella and Craig and Liza. Um, but I think it was just, you know, spending time with people that you really enjoy spending time with. I think it makes it a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. When you come into a series like this, you know, how much time did you get to prepare on your own? Was it a very quick process of getting the screenplay and then getting in there? Yeah, it was very quick. Um, I had gotten the, the screen um, player or, or some of the sides um, for Ry the Riley character. I read it and I was super intrigued, but I was a little confused because I hadn't played the game. Uh, <laughs> but once I got on the phone with, you know, Liza, the producers, Craig, Neil, they explained the, the game, the show, what their vision was. And I talked a little bit about my vision or what I thought my vision was initially for Riley. And uh, we all, you know, just hit it off and got along very quickly. And you know, the rest is history. I, I flew to Canada a couple of weeks later and we start shooting. <laughs> wow. Did you ever go back to the video game or like watch it for inspiration or did you have to keep that separate? Yeah, I tr I tried to keep it separate. I did see a few things, especially when they did um, the, you know, the press announcement. I mm -hmm. start seeing all the, the the pages and like the the fandoms which was really cool but I tried to stay away from the gameplay because I wanted to you know put my full attention in making the character um me but also not reinventing the character because so many people loved her uh so I, I tried to do that process on my own but I do plan on this summer playing the game and and diving all in hmm. So in the process of kind of creating her for yourself, was there a particular aspect of Riley that you really latched onto or something of yourself that you feel like you brought to her? Yeah, I mean, I think we're really similar in the ways in which we, you know, operate with people and, and love people. And, um, you know, she doesn't take any any crap and she's a rebel and she's radical and I think I have a little bit of those uh traits in me as well so it wasn't hard to you know step into her shoes but we do have different circumstances I'm not living in a post-apocalyptic world obviously um so it was just those certain new nuances and complexities where I had to stay true to who she is. I had to stay true to her character, but also not neglect how I would feel in her shoes. Hmm. One thing I really love about this series is they really went all out with the, the sets, the production design, and this episode feels like, you know, they take this trip to the mall. It's almost like this little fantasy break for them amidst the apocalypse. Mm -hmm. What does it do for you to have this amazing like huge set to play around in. Yeah, I mean, it was incredible. A, a bit of them all uh, scene was shot on stage, um, but most of it was shot in an actual abandoned mall in Canada, uh, which was very odd because I had never been in an abandoned mall before. Uh, but I think it, it just really helped inform, um, you know, the world and, you know, making it feel like it was a post-apocalyptic and very scary and, 
very dusty and dirty and frightening. And of course, you know, um, the special effects and set design and everybody that had a hand in, in making it look visually as stunning as it did, I think did an, a, a great job. So I had the easy job of just, you know, coming in and, and doing what I needed to do. The world was set for me. Yeah, the this um, kind of setup of it, you know, she plans this tour of the wonders of the mall for, for Ellie. It turns into something that's a bit more romantic at the end. Do you think Riley plans this night as a kind of date night, or is she surprised that it goes there? What is what is she thinking at the outset? Um, I think while planning this, she had maybe a a thought that it might go that way, but I don't think that was her intentions. I mean, she definitely neatly uh left Ellie <laughs> um for the Firefly. So I think this is just not a way to you know be romantic or flirty but a way to win her best friend back and she knows just the right things to do that and you know if things went the way that they did she wouldn't be mad at that but she also wouldn't have been mad if they were you know just you know having fun dancing and then the 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 infected came in without the kiss <laughs> <laughs> well i i appreciated the way that you know, the two of you uh, crafted that moment of getting to the kiss because it just kind of unfolds as if you're both kind of discovering it at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk about what, what that moment was like? What went into that? Yeah, I mean, um, it was a nerve wracking moment for me because uh, I just wanted it to be right. And I didn't want it to, I didn't want it to be too much because um, I know we are dealing with young humans and we are dealing with like new, fresh feelings that they're trying to figure out in the moment so I think Liza and Craig specifically did such a, a good job of being gentle with that moment and like you said it felt organic and it felt like something that was just that just happened and that they like they love each other and they love each other as best friends and you know they they've had these feelings and maybe have talked about it or even had these thoughts that have crossed their mind but but again, at the end of the day, day, they're friends and it just happened and it was beautiful and it was organic. And I think it's a perfect representation of, you know, how young people figure out who they are and who they love. And that should be accepted. And to be able to be representative of that is, is an ultimate honor for me. Yeah. Do you think that, you know, once they realize their kind of feelings, um, they're out in the open, does Riley consider staying or does she rethink does that make her rethink what's what her choices are I think it does it does definitely in that moment she's like oh no like I can't leave I can't go to Atlanta or I, I have to bring you to Atlanta with me um so in that moment I think she would have liked to to have the have the kiss and then they figure out what the game plan was but of course they were rudely interrupted um but I did I I do definitely feel like Riley did feel like, okay, I've got my best friend back. Wow, this kiss happened. Maybe that will turn into something later. But the the most important thing for her was getting Ellie back in her good graces or being back in Ellie's good graces, rather. Um, and, you know, things played out the way they did. Yeah. Well, even more than just being rudely interrupted, it's <laughs> heartbreaking. It's totally heartbreaking what happens to them because... As they're bitten, you just like watch both you and Bella, like the reactions are like watching your dreams just shatter right in front of you uh, yeah. because they just were shown the world. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty heavy moment to have just to come into a series with one episode and then, you know, have to dive into that. What was that? What was playing that scene like with Bella? Yeah, I mean, it was so emotional. It was our, our last couple um, days filming. So we were super exhausted. The stunts were exhausting. The emotional stakes were the highest they had been in that episode, I think. Um, but, you know, filming that with Bella, I think, was, was a, a collaboration. And, and we had a lot of fun, but we knew that we had a job to get done. Like, we have to have this beautiful, poetic moment. We have to do these stunts and then we have to end it all and how do we end it all how do we leave people um beautifully like heartbroken and undone 
<laughs> and I think we did just that. But I think it it was just being simple and not trying to do too much. Of course, they process uh, being bitten differently. Uh, Ellie, you know, starts to go in a rage and and Riley is, you know, I think a little bit more composed because she is somebody who is super realistic and it is not lost on her that this could happen. Like eventually it's going to, in her mind, it's going to happen to all of us. Was this the ideal moment for it to happen? Absolutely not. But these are the cards that they were dealt and now they have to play the hand. Hmm. Yeah, it's really tough to tough to watch. I think, you know, this season, every single episode, it was like got more and more viewers as it went on. It really just exploded. And, and this fandom is very, very involved. What has the what has that been like for you seeing the reaction to everything? Yeah, um, it's been wild. It's been really, really wild. I've appreciated every moment of it. And um, I think just for people to see you in different lights and 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 to see you in different projects and and embody different characters, I think is really cool and, and a, a cool opportunity for me to connect with different types of people in different audiences. And you know, the the drawings, I mean, it's so wild how talented the fandom is because like, like the, the drawings that they make and and the the collages and the pictures that they post I think it's just all so heartwarming and and it reminds me how grateful I am to be a part of The Last of Us and then you know you do have those those real fan moments where I was like in Arizona for the Super Bowl with my friends and I was you know, on ASU's campus, just walking down the road, trying to get some Taco Bell. (laughs) Like legit grown man. I love the moment, but like legit grown man starts screaming. And I was like, oh, he probably like recognizes me from something else. And this is before the episode had even aired. Um, And he was like, oh my God, oh my God, you're Riley from The Last of Us. I was like, wow, you're excited and it hasn't even come out yet. (laughs) (laughs) A true fan. Yeah, exactly. No, I, yeah. I appreciate every moment. Yeah. Well, you, you know, you talked about being able to be seen in different lights. Uh, and I think you've already really amassed a very varied kind of resume of different types of characters. Is there something, is there some type of story or some type of character that you're still dying to play that you haven't gotten the chance to yet? Yeah, I mean, of course. Um I think I just want to try to be as t- intentional as possible um, with the, the projects I choose to be a part of and continue to tell the stories that are uh, not being told or not being told correctly. Um, and then, you know, I have the the big targets like the action film and like a romantic comedy. I'm eyeing a romantic comedy or like a romantic dramedy. Um, I just want to be able to continue to ve- develop my skills as an actress and and hone in on my craft. And I feel like being a part of different projects or projects that I'm not used to being a part of um, will do that for me. Well, we will speak a romantic comedy into the universe for you. Uh, <laughs> um, before I let you go, there was, you know, I uh, there's a lot of like fandom, like when there was conversation afterwards, uh, when the show came out of like, oh, they didn't like show them, you know, they didn't show what hap- had to happen when when Ellie dealt with Riley turning after that bite. If they ever decided to go back there, because, you know, would you ever come back and be like, yeah, well, I will film that? Or is it, does it feel complete to you? Oh, no. It, I mean, if they called and they said, we need you back, n- no questions asked, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> um I don't know if I would want to see that scene continue, though. I think we left it in a beautiful place. And I mm-hmm. think it it's it's kind of cool leaving it up to the audience's imagination. Uh, obviously, we we know what happens after those moments, but um, we don't know how long. We don't know how long it took. So I think it, it's beautiful for people to have their own interpretation of that but if there were more flashbacks of Riley before that moment or when they used to live together or anything like that I will be there (laughs) well we'll we'll all have to to keep our imaginations going for what happened afterwards then uh thank you so much for sitting and chatting some last of us with me storm for everyone out there watching make sure you subscribe to gold derby keep with us this season storm thank you so much it's been a pleasure Thank you so much. Thank you.